The story I'd like to share with you today is called Beware of the Storybook Wolves. I hope you enjoy it. Every night, Herb's mother would read him a bedtime story. Sometimes it was about a big wolf who terrified little girls and their grandmothers with his chilling growl and his big yellow teeth. You could tell from the picture that toothpaste had never been on his shopping list. The story got very nasty in the middle and everybody nearly came to a sticky end. But by the last page, it had all turned out well and went happy ever afterly. It was one of Herb's favourites. He particularly liked the back cover that had a picture of a smaller wolf with a patch over one eye and the words, for a real thrill, try reading the story of The Little Fierce Wolf and the Three Pink Piglets. It will scare your socks off. Whenever his mother finished the bedtime story, Herb would say, don't forget to take the book with you. And his mother would ask, why? Because there's a wolf in it, of course. Herb would say. Herb's mother would smile to herself because she knew that storybook wolves are not at all dangerous. One night, just as they were finishing the wolf story, the telephone rang. In her hurry, Herb's mother forgot all about taking the book with her. Herb didn't realise at first, but as he was snoozing off, he thought he heard a deep, rumbling sound coming from his bedside table. It was like the rumbling of a very hungry tummy or perhaps even two very hungry tummies. Then he began to smell a not very nice smell, a sort of bad breath type of a smell. Herb got a funny feeling that two or maybe even three eyes were watching him. Unwisely, he switched on the light. And there, standing in front of him, was the big storybook wolf. And next to him was the other smaller wolf with a patch over one eye. Herb recognised him as the back cover wolf. Mmm, big wolf said in a low, greedy voice. I thought I could smell something tasty. I'm going to gobble you up, little boy. And he started to lick his chops. Toes. They look just like piglets, said Little Wolf. And he tried to lick his chops, but he wasn't very good at it and just ended up dribbling on the carpet. I wouldn't eat me yet, stammered Herb, desperately trying to think of a plan to distract the wolves from wolfing him. Why not, said Big Wolf, giving him a sideways stare. Yes, why not, said Little Wolf, trying to give him a sideways stare. Um, because little boys are for pudding. You have to start with starters, of course. I didn't know that, said Big Wolf. Really, said Herb, feeling a little bit pleased with his own craftiness. He thought everybody knew that. Oh, I knew that, said Little Wolf. No, you did not, said Big Wolf, who was slightly less fierce than before. Yes, I certainly did, said Little Wolf, puffing himself up. Well, if you're so clever then, what's starters? Triumphed Big Wolf. <gasps> you could tell that Little Wolf hadn't even heard of starters, but not wishing to sound stupid, he shouted, Jelly starters! Everybody knows that. Then Big Wolf and Little Wolf looked at Herb and said, Where's the jelly? Jelly, jelly, where was the jelly? Herb's mind was whirring like a frantic thing. Then he caught sight of his book of fairy tales. He'd been looking at it last night and it was lying open on the page where the dozy princess falls asleep at her own birthday party. No one at the table would notice if he borrowed a jelly. They were all snoozing, tired of waiting for Princess Beautiful to wake up. Herb was so busy struggling to slide the jelly off the page, he didn't notice the wicked fairy, wide awake and hiding under the table. She'd been listening to every word. This was bad luck for Herb, because the wicked fairy hated little boys only slightly less than she hated little girls. They made her very nervous. She'd seen what those little 
brats Hansel and Gretel had done to that poor defenceless witch. Not only did they nibble her cottage half to pieces, but then they went and shoved her in her own oven. Children put her in a very bad mood indeed. Oh, you dozy doormat, don't you know anything, snarled the fairy? You wolf half-wits give wickedness a bad name. He's tricked you, you twerps. Little boys are starters. Jelly is pudding. And with that, the wicked witch jumped back into the book and snapped it shut. First, the wolves went almost purple in the cheeks with embarrassment. And then their eyes went all mean and squinty. Her could tell things had taken a turn for the really quite bad. So he snatched up the fairy tale book, found the page with the fairy godmother in it and shook it until she tumbled out of the book and onto the floor. She was a bit cross actually because her dress got crumpled and she nearly twisted her ankle. Well, she said, I've got a good mind to turn you into a caterpillar, little boy. Oh, no, no, said her, don't turn me into a caterpillar. It's those two who need to be caterpillars. Oh, no, not you two again, said the godmother, spying the two alarmed wolves, always making trouble, blowing people's houses down and gobbling them up without so much as a do you mind. As she said this, she accidentally waved her wand at the little wolf and smoke went poof, just like in the fairy tales. And suddenly there was the little wolf standing in a ball gown. Oh dear, oh dear, this will never do, said the fairy godmother, shaking her head. That dress was meant for Cinderella. You shook me out of the book just as I was about to send her to the ball. Awfully nice dress, though. I have an eye for fashion, as you can probably tell. But not at all suitable for a wolf. Little Wolf took one look in the mirror and was so pleased with his new look that he jumped into the fairy tale book and went to the ball himself, which of course left Cinderella having a night in, cleaning the kitchen after all. Oh, well, that's that then, sighed the fairy godmother. I'm not going to be at all popular at the palace now. I don't know what the king and queen are going to say when a wolf turns up at the ball to dance with their son. I imagine they'll be very grumpy about it. I do hope he doesn't start snacking on the guests. The fairy godmother was so engrossed with her own problems, she hadn't noticed that the big bad wolf was poised, ready to swallow Herb in one gulp. <gasps> Help! screeched Herb. Quick as a quick thing, the fairy godmother whooshed her wand and big wolf was just a tiny caterpillar. Oh, I do like caterpillars, said the fairy godmother, popping it back into the wolf storybook. They're so undemanding, never bothering me for things, not like frogs, always thinking they're princes. What's more, I really have had enough of being squashed inside a book, doing favours for spoiled princesses. I'm going to take a holiday somewhere far away from royalty. And in a sudden twinkle of sequins, she disappeared. Before Herb got back into bed, he piled up all his books and then put the heaviest thing he could find on top of them, just in case anyone else was tempted to get out of his story. Then he switched off his light and dreamed of fierce caterpillars, fashionable wolves and grouchy godmothers. The funny thing was, next time Herb's mother came to read the wolf story, there was no wolf to be seen, just a tiny caterpillar trying with all his might to terrify a little girl in a red coat. That's the end. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye for now.